Welcome to Impressions Magazine's Ask the Experts podcast and video series, where we talk to veteran professionals from across the decorated apparel industry about the technologies and techniques they've used to help make their own businesses a success. In this episode, we'll be talking with veteran screen printer Rick Roth, owner of Mirror Image Inc., a custom decorated apparel shop based in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, about the state of screen printing and the decorated apparel industry in general. In addition to Mirror Image, Rick is also the founder of The Ink Kitchen, a kind of online clearinghouse of information on all aspects of the decorated apparel industry. He's also the host of the Shop Talk series of panel discussions that take place at each of our three Impressions Expos. Rick has long been serious about giving back to the industry and the community as a whole, and he's the kind of guy who doesn't mince words, whether you're talking about the latest screen printing tech or the key to running a successful business. And with that, let's check in with Rick. So, Rick, it is great to have you with us, and thanks for joining us on Ask the Experts. Great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so we're just going to jump into this here. You know, um, uh, as I alluded in my uh, my intro, uh, our topic today is the state of screen printing and decorated uh, decorating apparel in general. But to get us started, I was wondering if you could just give us a quick overview of uh, where and how you started and how uh, both you uh, and the industry have evolved over the years. Well, I've been screen printing since dinosaurs ruled the earth quite a while. And uh, um, actually, you know, started with... How could that be? You still look like you're in your 20s. <laughs> like me. <laughs> or more like I was born in the 20s. Um, so uh, um, I uh, learned from some friends how to screen print. I printed literally thousands of shirts in my basement without uh, even having a press, just like uh, by eye. And uh, so I have kind of a visceral understanding and then got way, way into it. Like, wasn't even financial, I don't think. You know, early on, I, I knew one of the biggest screen printing companies. He's like, you got to have a goal. And I've many times said, I wish my goal had been to be the richest, but it was to be the best. So we won every award. We were um, in parallel with some people like Dave Gardner, developed a simulator process, got into special effects. Um have you know won probably pretty much every award there is to win um and then um you know even though it's all into screen printing my company mirror image does embroidery dtf dtg and right. all kinds of decoration there's a place for all of it and then i started the ink kitchen about um maybe it was 10 years ago as a way to kind of give back to the industry a lot of people helped me when i started out i really uh feel like the the industry could do more for education and the ink kitchen provides especially free education, which uh, generous sponsors cover, including impressions. And uh, then we, I try the ink kitchen tries to organize people to do good. I'd say, you know, so when there's a trade show in long beach, like the impression show this year, we're going to probably make a donation of over $15,000 to a homeless program. It's a really good program. So, and then we try to have fun. So we have a lot of parties at shows and at Mirror Image and stuff as well to bring people together. You know, right, we had a right. party recently and the head of every equipment company was at the party. You know, if the, if the industry isn't fun and educational, people aren't going to come out to do it. And then the vendors would be stuck fighting for one person, you know, right, you gotta, right. gotta, gotta make the tent bigger. Right. Also, also real quick, you know, it popped into my head. You guys, uh, uh, you do a lot of work, um, both in terms of the garments that decorate, decorate, uh, you know, in addition to shop talk and the, and the, and the not-for-profits you work with as part of impressions expo, you work with farm aid and, and any number of other not-for-profits as well. Is that correct? Yeah, that's our a big motivation. I mean, our biggest customer is probably Sam Adams, but we, um, we really specialize and well, our shop is union shop, but besides that, we're just our orientation. So we do farm aid, Amnesty International, uh, right. student for free to bed, things like that. We, we work with um, the newest customer we have is a national alliance to end homelessness, for example, cool. you know, that's, yeah. if you're going to put your efforts somewhere, it's might as well make money for some people that are doing good, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, cool. Um, uh, so in other words, you've been around and you know the business. So uh, with that in mind, 
Um, it, you know, there's obviously been a lot of change in terms of everything from, from printing equipment, tech, uh, the types of ink used, uh, you know, across the board in terms of the decorated apparel industry. Um, and, and, I, and I I think a quick aside here as well, I think you mentioned, and you, you started as a screen printer, but you do DTF now, DTG, embroidery. I mean, you're covering everything. Yeah. Um, I guess a question. Uh, um there's a lot going on. There's a lot of automation, uh, both on the on the software side and the mechanical side. But um, it strikes me that at the end of the day, all the tech in the world isn't going to do you much good if you neglect the basic the basic craft of of screen printing on fabric. You know, for example, curing your inks uh, correctly. And uh, thoughts on on that side of the business, especially for people who are, are looking to get into it. Well, that's funny you mentioned curing the ink. I think that I don't know. I have a friend that for his job traveled around the country and. Uh, a supplier and he estimated that maybe 30 to 40 percent of places were not adequately curing the ink <laughs> really <laughs> yeah it's a pretty common thing so yeah i think and, that and, and, and the and the implications of that are that it'll wash off <laughs> now luckily the distress look is a popular look or they'd really be in trouble <laughs> <laughs> uh seriously i think that is it All right and then honestly if like a hundred people have a problem. One realizes it; the other think it's their own fault, the way they washed it or something like that. But right, yeah, right. it's a big problem actually. Um, so yeah, you got to know screen printing. You got to know about garments. You know, knowledge is is key. You know, um, I think that more than ever, you know, there is one change. I think automation is is like extremely important. Uh, at this point, you know, instead of crying about the fact that you can't get enough employees, you're going to have to uh, not get rid of employees, but you have to multiply the good employees you have by giving them the tools to get more right. done. And so you're going to see, you know, more development on that front. And then the other thing is, I think, workflow, as it gets faster and faster with so many options to decorate the the software and the the organization becomes more important it's like what is what shirt is it what does it get on it and where does it go when you're done you know and, and that process becomes more of a bottleneck you know as, as progress happens there's different bottlenecks you know if you make your screens faster suddenly you can't get your printing done as fast as your screens are ready or right. um, you know, if you start printing really fast and your screens are ready, getting your ink mixed in time is, becomes more of a problem. So in this way, all the decoration is 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 becoming faster and faster, and you have so many more options. It, the, I think that we're going to see in the next five years an explosion of ways to get the work done qu more quickly. Right. But I'm thinking at the same time, if anything, the faster you go, the more important it is that again you nail down those fundamentals. Whether it's you know it's it's matching the right ink to the right garment to the right you know application. Whether it's just taking care of your screens, right? Uh, you know whether whether it's whether it's just taking care of your squeegees. I would think. I mean, still that's all part of the craft, right? I mean, it's like the Renaissance painters used to make their own brushes, right? And if you don't take care of your squeegees, the fanciest auto in the world is still gonna. It's not gonna do what you want it to, right? Well, that's funny. I think that you're just picking squeegees out of the air. But another friend who's one of the best printers, I would say, um, like he can use, he said, I, I can use anything, but I have to have good squeegees. Like, and, really? okay. and that is very often neglected. Um, I've been at places where they buy a press and it has what I would call bad squeegees in it. And they never change them ever, like years later. That's just going to cause you a world of problems right. so yeah knowledge now, is are, they, are they and are they are they experiencing problems or just like eh, that's just the cost of doing that particular place I, that i'm thinking of i went to is a very big place they do pretty simple printing and they were wondering wow. why they couldn't do more complex and that was one of the reasons and a lot of their printing didn't look that great also, printing is a system. You can overcome certain things. If you have crappy screens, you can do certain things that will make it easier. It doesn't mean that you should have crappy screens. It'd be a lot easier to not have that problem, but you can overcome some things. Right. But okay. you're never going to get too far without a uh, good screen. Fundamental, screen. so to speak. Fund yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Um, well, we, we've been talking about screen. Obviously, again, you do everything. Uh, you know, mirror, mirror image says everything. Um, but getting back to screen printing, 
you know, it's 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 been around forever. You know, I've, in fact, I you know, one of these days I got to look back and I, I'd be curious to see like the original screen printing technique that the Chinese came up with, uh, silk screening, right? They must have used silk. Um, but there, there's a lot of obviously there's a lot of other decorating techniques out there, especially just for T-shirts, um, uh, things like DTG, DTF, um, heat pressing. You know, you know, in, you know, kind of in 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 cooperation with with DTF. But uh, but I wonder what your feeling is. You know, is screen printing going to go away? Uh, or, you know, how, what is the role of screen printing now? And what do you, how do you see it in the future? Well, it's funny. Everything that comes down the pike is like, oh, DTF is going to do away with DTG. DTG is going to do away with screen printing. You know, really just the more methods you have, the more creative you can be, the more quickly you can get things done, the more you can solve. Otherwise, you know, like it's really hard to screen print on non-woven bags. You have to use some kind of air dry ink or catalyst mm -hmm. or, you know, DTF is a great solution for that. It doesn't mean that it replaces screen printing for everything. It doesn't look that good on like cotton garments, for example. Okay. Yeah, you can make it look, look a little better and maybe acceptable, but, you know, it doesn't get right into the fibers, for example. Um, you know, on a white polyester shirt, sublimation is the best response. You know, there's a lot of different ways to decorate and the more things in your cupboard that you can grab to do it, the more efficiently you're going to do it and the more, the better results that you're going to get. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'll think about really, screen really printing. Really big production runs too, though. Screen printing yes. is still oh, game, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Although, you know, people are uh, finding ways to do a lot of transfers pretty fast too. Um, yeah. Yeah. But that's a different look. The other thing about screen printing is it, it's kind of a basic decorating thing. Like you, the people I know that are good screen printers do the best DTG also. Hmm. Like you don't understand the whole process. You're not going to do as good a job with uh, the the other processes. Interesting. Know? Interesting. So, um, you know, there's something to be said, you know, if you know how to color right. separate for screen printing, your right. DTG work can come out better. You know, as, as I think, you know, I, I come from kind of a marine background and, I, and I'm, I'm smiling because I'm thinking, you know, for the longest time, even when, you know, steam engines were running freighters out there on the oceans, everyone still wanted people with sailing experience, you know, uh, because that's the way. And as a sailor myself, I'm a bit of snob about that. But I do feel like, you know, the best mariners, if you want to learn seamanship, so to speak, you should get out there with a sailboat, you know, and it sounds like in some ways, if you really want to know how decorating works, how the fibers interact with the ink. There's nothing like screen printing because you're you're doing it all yourself, right? Well, it's funny also what's come around for uh, for now on freighters. Yeah, Same. well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, no, yeah. We're, <laughs> well, if we want to go down that rabbit hole, we're going to be talking for hours. But yes, there's some there. There's a lot of really cool little tech uh, just for harnessing the wind um, to reduce emissions because. Um, unfortunately, a little, it's a little bit like the, like the, the fashion industry, which is a bigger polluter than most people realize, uh, just those freighters going back and forth out there. They, they, oh boy, they're dirty. They're really dirty. So, um, they burn very nasty fuel, but, but we digress. Um, okay, cool. Well, I'll tell you what, we're, we're kind of, you know, we like to keep these short, uh, short yeah, yeah. And, and frequent. So, so I, you know, it's coming to the end of the year here. Um, it's that holiday spirit. And I was wondering, uh, you know, in terms of the technical side of decorated apparel, in terms of the, the business management side, in terms of sustainability, kind of the attitude of the industry or certainly many people within the industry, industry towards the environment, towards towards workers, towards equity. Um, there's a lot going on. Uh, so I wonder, you know, you've been around for a while, um, uh, you know, since the dinosaurs and, uh, and looking ahead to 2024, you know, looking in your crystal ball, what, what do you see? Uh, or what what should your fellow decorators be thinking about or or anticipating as we come around into uh, 2024? Well, one, having been around longer than many people that might hear this. Um, <laughs> you and me both, brother. <laughs> yes. The uh, I think one thing that's going to happen is, uh, you know, we had the severe shortages uh, and what the cause of those was is still a little murky. But during COVID and uh, then people built up inventories greatly well i can guarantee you we will have shortages later in the year ah, <laughs> they're okay. very reactive and so you know there's this whole thing in business of delivery delay versus inventory and so you know they got terrible delivery delays so they boosted the 
inventory and now they're going to, you know, oh my God, what are we going to do with all this inventory? And they're going to stop making shirts um, to the same degree as my guests. They don't look ahead and uh, they uh, will have some shortages as my guests. Interesting. Interesting. Well, you know, it's funny, you know, talking about craft, that's kind of like business basics too, you know, projecting what you need and especially in this whole just in time environment, you know, nobody yeah. wants to keep inventory a moment longer than they should. And I do think there are hidden costs in terms of, of loss of capacity when you need it kind of thing. Um, that's interesting. Interesting. So we're all right. Pro, the prediction, well, I mean, it's a huge, it's shortages. a, it's a huge uh, issue, you know, for really big programs or ongoing programs, you really have to have a reliable supply. Right. So in an era where there's a lot of unique garments, it becomes really essential. So if you have a particular garment that's really special, that's the most vulnerable, you know, because you can't replace it with something else. So it really is a, a kind of a big deal. And then I think DTF mania will chill out a little bit, probably is my guess. It's not as easy to make the transfers as you think. Um, and uh, well, there's also but, the option of outsourcing too. I mean, you can get so many, you know, there are any number of companies out there provide, you know, if you're, if you're starting out, yeah. especially you want to invest in a machine that could break down, which you're going to have to learn, or there's all kinds of companies out there. And, and to my, to my eye, they're, they're doing pretty good work. And, and, and they're certainly, yeah, for me, I think it's back. a combination. Like I, I didn't get TTF machine to replace buying transfers from other companies. You know, it, it's just uh, certain things you need that crazy fast turnaround or um, it needs to okay. cost less or something. But um, you're going to see the transfer companies really have it going on. You know, they they have some of the best and brightest people right now. Interesting. Okay. Of course, quite a few transfers are screen printed. So uh, um, they're going to come up with new adhesives. They're going to come up with new solutions. They're going to come up with decorations that couldn't be done screen printing wise for okay. difficult locations, for different called substrates. I mean, the garment people are going to coming up with new substrates all the time. Transfer people are at the very cutting edge of how to decorate those substrates. So mm -hmm. transfers are not going away. I don't think DTG is going away. It, it's more and more it can look just like screen printing. And so it's a great solution when you don't want inventory, uh, either right. to do it uh, just in time or, or on demand. And right. um, it's also a great adjunct to screen printing, I will say. Sure. Uh, you know, that's, that's a shocker for some people. You, you know, you don't replace screen printing. It's a great accessory to screen printing, you know, to set up samples. I can't tell you, even some of my best customers, you know, they'll see something printed and then, oh, they had seen a mock-up, but they have to see it on a shirt to decide that they wanted it smaller or bigger. God, mm -hmm. that's a savings if you can DTG that ahead of time. Right, um, right. Or, or you're screen printing and, you know, the, the owner of the company was a triple X and they forgot to make one for him. You know, you don't want to set up those eight screens front and back for that guy, you know, or, you know, you want Although to, if you have to, you will, right? <laughs> oh yeah, no, I've done it. And now I don't have to, we can DTG it. Um, Interesting. So, um, and then an appreciation for what screen printing is. I, I mean, I think that's what's gone on with the poster printing that we do with impressions right. is that, you know, uh, uh, you know, analog, <laughs> if you will, over, over digital um, right. has its merits, you know, mm -hmm. you know, do a poster with a blend and everyone's a little unique and like, it's got a tactile -ness. you know, you see like touring bands have screen printed posters now, you know, yeah. that did not go away. It came back. Well, I can, they're printing vinyl. I mean, you know, it's, it's, the, there's that tactile thing. So I'll so tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in here real quick though, because right. we're getting low on time, but I do want to ask you something. I don't know if you are, have you been implementing artificial intelligence in, I know you've done shop talk conversations about this. Um, and I know we're going to be covering it more thoughts on kind of, that's kind of the buzzword these days across the, 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 the you know, the infoverse. And it's in decorated apparel. Where do you, are you implementing it? Do you see that being a big force? It is going to be a huge force. That is the last, that was going to leave it with this. So you oh, okay. like, right on, right on point. Thanks. <laughs> we didn't rehearse this ahead of time, but, if no, we, but this is how we, exactly how it would have gone. We dinosaurs, our brains are small and they're on the same <laughs> wavelength, right? <laughs> Both brains, the one there and in our butt, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
It's huge. We, we are absolutely doubling. We've uh, partnered with Michelle Moxley, who yep. I think has the, I mean, I think she's way beyond anything I've seen anybody else um, yep. in terms of understanding it and its implication for our industry. And we're, we're, Going all in, I, I I can't tell you how influential it's going to be in a few years. And it's the hottest topic. A lot of people realize it. Yep. And it's going to change, you know, everything from how you order garments to how you color separate to, you know, a lot of drudgery. You know, I, 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 yep. Yep. you know, you know, we have these stores. You can use it to write the blurbs. You know, a human where I see it is not replacing humans again. You know, what I talked about automation, I was actually right. including artificial intelligence. The people that you have that are good, that understand things, these will help them get more done. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? The person that uses artificial intelligence only to make a color separation, my guess is it won't be that great. Maybe passable, but a person that knows what they're doing using it, it's a going to be an amazing tool to get things done faster and better. All right. All it's right. Coming. Well, it's not coming. It's here. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and glad you mentioned Michelle, because we, I'm definitely going to be getting her on, uh, on ask the experts, uh, at some point in early 2020. And will, will she be in some shop talk? Uh, panel She's going to be in two shop talks. Actually, we're going to have one for beginners and we're going to have a very advanced one. It's going to, that's, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And, um, and kitchen is going to have like a twice monthly, very, very deep dive by her. Um, so I'm looking forward to that this year. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, well, I'm going to say right now in the show notes to this video podcast, we will have links to Expo and the In Kitchen um, and, and all that kind of stuff for people who want to learn more. So, yeah, you want to check. Great. You have to check her things out. You have yeah. to watch them about 10 times to get everything out of them. They're great. Right. Out, yeah. And she, yeah. She's a cool woman and very articulate and very interesting. So, um, yeah, that'll be fun. All right, Rick. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground here. I think you and I are going to have to have more of these conversations um, moving forward. But thanks. Thanks a lot for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks very much. I look forward to talking to you again. All right. We'll talk to you later. All right. Well, that wraps up our conversation with Rick Roth, founder and CEO of Mirror Image Inc. and The Ink Kitchen. For those interested in learning more about Mirror Image Inc., go to mirrorimage.com. For those interested in learning more about The Ink Kitchen, go to inkkitchen.com. That's I-N-K-K-I-T-C-H-E-N.com. For those interested in learning more about Impressions Magazine and the thrice annual Impressions Expo trade shows held in Fort Worth, Texas, Long Beach, California, and Atlantic City, New Jersey, go to impressionsmagazine.com. For now, though, thanks for joining us and keep on decorating.